Hey guys, welcome back. My name's Sandy. This is Sawing with Sandy. I'm out here at my wood pile and as you can see behind me, I've got some wood that I need to process on my wood splitter. I was debating doing that today, but I think I'm going to hold off doing that because I want to fire up the chainsaw and put a bit of oil through that thing. And so I'm going to do just that. I've got my husky out. I'm going to suit up in just a minute. I've got some fresh trees here, which came down. Um, well, they, these came down up in my house. I had some, some white pine that I needed to take out and as a result, I've got some decent logs here. Now there's a mixture here, there's some softwood, there's some hardwood, and the hardwood's relatively small, you can see back here. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna fire up the chainsaw, I'm gonna cut up the hardwood into 16 inch lengths. These will become firewood. I'm gonna take stuff like this, the large part of the white pine I cut down, and I'm gonna try to pick a piece out of it that I can run on the sawmill. And as you guys can see here, pretty good diameter, I'll measure that just to give you an idea. So we'll make that into some lumber, I've got another good piece right down here. I'm going to run that on the sawmill for sure. Just a little look at that. That's probably about 18 inches or so at the, the big end. So we'll run that on the sawmill. Some of this other stuff here we might uh, might use on the sawmill as well. If it's kind of scraggly at all, I'll just cut up for cut up for firewood. And you can see that white pine right there full length. I haven't limbed yet, so we got to do that as well. But we're going to get this taken care of here today. Put, a, put an hour or two on the uh, on the old husky and hopefully have a good afternoon. Glad you guys are here. Let's go. If you guys live in central Ontario, Canada or anywhere relatively close, you probably know exactly what black fly season is and it it happens once all the ice comes off all the lakes and then, then the bugs hatch in the water and as a result the black flies come out, horse flies, deer flies, mosquitoes and Kind of in that order and end up uh, just biting the back of your neck biting the inside of your ears getting into your shirt biting everywhere and makes life pretty miserable and so i get out here get a bit of work done once the snow's gone before the black flies hit as you guys can imagine if i don't get started on this i'm gonna get way behind and then i'll be out here in the black fly season cutting this up splitting it because i got to get it started drying because our drying season well it's not like it's arizona here so i got to get it out into the ibc cages for the maximum amount of drying time so that if I want to use some of this wood in the fall for heating, then uh, it's good to go. That's the reason I'm out here and I'm trying to hustle today. Despite the fact that we've got a storm looming, I would rather work out here in the rain to be honest, or the snow, or the sleet, or the hail, the black flies. I'm going to be using this thing again. I love this thing. I, once I discovered it, I have a hard time even thinking of not using it. This right here is the original loggers tape made by the U.S. Tape Company, I think. No uh, affiliation with them, but it's a great product. I love it. I put this on the log and then more or less, you guys can see, i shown you that in the past. This hooks on to the end of the log and then I can go and measure the length. I do this only for the sawmill saw logs. And then uh, once I get to the end, I can, I can pull it and then that goes straight. And then as a result, it just comes off the log. I don't have to walk back and... Hook it up, fresh sludge. All right, here's the old Husky 555. Fire warm up. <laughs> cutting right. Thank <laughs> you. 
Alright guys, well, I think a storm is just about to hit here. We'll see how far we get, but you guys can see it's still windy and the clouds have changed color, so we're probably about to get poured on. There's everywhere. Come check this out. That's uh, that's just a little snake there, and I'm not a snake expert by any means. It's probably a garter snake, but I'll look that one up. You did see him sort of go at the camera. They're pretty harmless, I'm sure. As a kid, I would have probably handled that. A bit older now, maybe a touch wiser. So I'm just going to leave him there. He's inside there, probably uh, just seeking shelter from who knows what's up there in the air. Anyways, I also saw a toad around here, but who knows where that went. 
anyways i think we'll call that good uh if i push that again i might crush them and i sort of like all creatures so we'll leave that one in there and get down to splitting here we go i gotta tell you i'm way behind on my firewood and uh, although it doesn't look like it i try to try to get the firewood done in the spring and that didn't happen this year a whole bunch of stuff on the go so i gotta put up uh, an umbrella because i'm gonna pretty i'm gonna pretty much melt out here if i don't take shelter those of you who live places like florida or maybe a drier climate like arizona or something you guys are probably laughing but it's probably about 28 degrees celsius here today the humidity is relatively low but coming from a guy who's just got off you know five months of winter this is like this is too much so i'm just jerry rigging something here just to make a little post that'll probably do and we're gonna put this thing up. oh yeah looks good to me Let's see how this is gonna work a little windy out here so hopefully this will hold You know it's a hot one and a sunny one when I've got sunglasses on. I don't wear them a lot, it's just when I'm driving. All right, let's put one more on there. I would say that's gonna work. Beautiful. It's good enough for this guy. Look at that, that's a beautiful thing. Okay, well. Step one, step two, I'm gonna show you guys this thing. I just got this thing and I've been wanting to try this for quite some time and uh, finally uh, this came available locally and so I bought one uh, made by Fiskars obviously. I have a pickaroon or hookaroon as you would call it. Uh, however, I misplaced it. The one that I have, I, I took an old ax and I actually ground it down and cut the profile. It worked pretty good except I'm noticing this one has a lot thinner profile this way. And it also has this bit of a hook at the end. And as you guys are gonna see today, I think this hook is, is the ticket. I think this is what's gonna make life a lot easier. When you dive this into a log, uh, that little hook allows you to pick it up and it allows it so that when that log starts to sag, it almost grabs onto it and then you can carry it around. So this thing seems pretty solid. I've heard good, uh, good things about it. It's really, really light compared to my other one. And uh, so I'm looking forward to using it here today. I've probably only only tried it a few times, so I think today is going to be a good test. Anyways, let's get down to work and try not to melt. Here we go. I'm already sweating. I haven't done anything. Okay, let's hope this fires up. I'm trying to smash my elbow. Get rid of this thing when it fires up like that.
Well, I don't know how I haven't been stung yet, but there's actually a bee's nest. You guys saw a bee in there maybe? And the end of that, geez, now I'm thinking I'm getting stung. What was that? Anyways, uh, as I was saying, there's a bee that flew into the end of a piece of tube steel and I didn't think much of it. And then I had a look in there and guess what's in there? You guessed it. I got to get back there somehow. I want to shut the machine off and then we got to address the bees. You guys would have seen in other videos how this ends up going. I don't know. What's the plan? I guess be very careful. goes to uh just goes to show you you try to win and get ahead here and you just can't do it i don't know if you guys saw where i had it had the camera oh, another bug it was uh sort of down in that tube steel there i don't know what the heck i'm gonna do what do you guys think let's stand back here oh, there's bees everywhere all right what are we gonna do Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. What are we going to do here? <sighs> I don't know. Take a break. Alright guys, as I was scratching my head trying to figure out what I was going to do with those bees, I thought about getting the bee spray, pointing it in that tube steel and giving it to them. But then I thought, you know what, they'll come out the other end of the tube steel and probably sting me. So I figured we'll call our quits there today. Bees are all around coming in and out of that uh, that tube steel there on the end of the splitter. Whoa. Sorry. I thought that was a bee. I don't know what that was, but it definitely landed on my arm. So I'm going to call it quits there for today. Uh, didn't quite get as much split as I would have liked, and sometimes that happens. Sometimes equipment breaks down. Sometimes you, uh, well, have bees just like you saw. I don't want to get stung, and so I figure we'll call her quits heading in the shade. And just one last thing here. You guys would have seen me swinging this around, made by Fiskers. It's a hookaroon. This has been a great addition to this afternoon. This thing is very, very light in comparison to my other one, which has a wood handle and a relatively thick uh, metal end on it. So this being so light is really, really helpful for me. I'm not getting any younger, and what I'm finding is the lighter something is, the less fatigued I get. And as a result, I can work longer, and uh, therefore I can get more done. On most days when there's not bees now that uh, lightness in my tools also holds true for my chainsaw and everything else the lighter the tool the better allows me to work uh, work a little bit easier work a little bit longer less fatigued so this thing's turned out to be a great addition one other thing I like here see that hook on the end my other little hookaroon or pickaroon didn't have that that hook has been really nice because you don't have to have a really strong grip you can keep a nice loose grip and it still still grabs onto your hand and won't slide out especially when you got gloves on uh, this thing as well, see the profile there? It's got that little that little uptick at the end. That has been very helpful, as I mentioned previously. When you drive that into a, into a log, it be something like that. The log will start to sag under its own weight, but that little upkick there really grabs onto that piece and makes it so it doesn't fall off while you're, while you're moving it around. The only thing I'm going to have to learn is just the amount of uh, force to apply when I'm swinging this thing. Probably a piece of hard maple. I'm going to have to swing it a little bit harder to get through the bark, get through the end grain. Uh, something like that white pine there. I didn't have to swing very hard at all. A little bit of muscle memory will go a long way as I learn this thing. And before long, it'll pretty much be an extension of my arm. Anyways, guys, that's going to do it for me here today. I'll be back soon, hopefully. I'll take care of those bees and uh, we'll, uh, we'll fight another day. Guys, thanks for joining me. See you next time.